I know it's changed now, but when we did it, it was it was almost like a bit like the X Factor. So you would turn up, and the first test was have you got your national insurance number? And, and I'll be honest with you, you, that was it. Yes, there you go. Some, uh, somebody did turn up and fail that, so <laughs> that's where we started. Um, but it was almost like so they would do one test, and then they'd tell you put you in a room if you'd passed, and they'd put you in a room if you'd failed. And basically, if you'd failed, that was it. You were gone mm-hmm. home. The railway industry point of view, they love us because. Yeah. You're going to turn up on time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to follow the rules and the procedures. Yeah. You're going to know what, you're not going to go mad when something goes wrong. Even where I work, there's at least, off the top of my head, I can think of five or six ex police. Hi, Matt. Thanks so much for uh, agreeing to be interviewed on the Blue Lot Leavers podcast. It's really good of you. And this one is going to be incredibly popular. And, uh, people will work out very quickly why. So could you just tell us who you are and uh, what it is you're currently doing? Uh, yeah, so my name is Matthew Kent um, and I left the police uh, roughly five, six years ago now and I am now a train driver. Amazing. And that's why <laughs> lots of people are going to be interested in this particular episode because uh, it's so many, I get so many approaches, you know, do we know anyone or, you know, how do I become a train driver, that sort of thing. So it seems to be the big thing. So... What would be great is if you tell us a little bit first about, um, you know, your circumstances around, um, you know, your police career, what, what it was that you'd done within the police, how long you were in for, and then we'll talk about why you wanted to leave. Okay. Um, so I joined in 2006. Um, I'd just finished a university degree in physical education, as it happened, uh, and decided that teaching wasn't for me. So... Um, I, I'll be honest, didn't know too much about the police at that point, um, but I had a friend of a friend who was in and then got to know a couple of people and got told about all the good things and, you know, the teamwork and the solidarity and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, well, wow, that sounds like a good thing for me. So, um, yeah, applied, um, went in June, I think it was June 2006, if I remember rightly, um, did all my probation, uh, two and a half, I think it was just over two and a half years where I started. Uh, and then I transferred out to a different force and did a number of different things during uh, the time there. Um, but in total was in for approximately 10 and three quarter years. Right. Um, left, as I said earlier, approximately uh, five, where are we now? I think it'll be six years in November. Um, and yeah, went on to... Uh, to uh, be a train driver. That was, yeah, you know, so I had the job lined up and obviously retired, uh, left the force and, and started doing that. Ah, well, that's exactly where we're going with this, obviously. So, um, <laughs> um, so why did you? What was it that made you want to leave? What was your <clears throat> your reason for um, wanting to leave the police? So, I know a lot of people listening to this will go, "Well, you was only in for ten years," and I, I'll I'll take that one hundred percent. But it changed in my ten years. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, people who I've known who have done 30 years, I mean, like yourself, uh, will tell you that it changed in there, you know, probably three times in their 30 years, which is, you know, I completely accept. Um, but for me, when I joined, as I said earlier, the teamwork, the, you know, it, 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 the people, it was all really, really good, really positive, loved it, to be honest with you. Um, and, you know, the not going home, the, uh, you've got to do this tomorrow, I'm changing you on Thursday or whatever, kind of was part of it and accepted. And, and the, the one thing that I thought was it accepted it for me was if I ever had an issue, I felt like I would then get something back. Um, and, you know, I suppose that's one of the main things I thought changed over my uh, my service, the... Obviously, we had the pension changes in roughly in the mm-hmm. middle of my service. It didn't actually affect me as much as a lot of other people. Um, so, again, I can't really claim that was the, the driving force, but it certainly didn't help. Um, but I'd um, – so when I transferred to the different force, uh, I did another couple of years on the front line, um, probably about three. So I was probably about five years on the front line. And then I went into a, um, into a CT area. Uh, and stayed there for my final almost five years, uh, just uh, sorry, just over five years. Um, and what I, um, after being in that arena for for five years, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really fancy going back to the to the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. if I'm honest. 
Um, but on the same side of that, I didn't want to just stay as I was. I wanted to get promoted, perhaps, uh, you know, improve myself, try and get further. And when I attempted to do that, that kind of involved going back out into the degree, which is, again, I completely yeah. understand, but was, was part of it. Yeah. Um, so for me then, I kind of felt like I'd pigeonholed myself slightly into the role I was in. I was well trained in the role I was in, mm-hmm. but um, I didn't really feel like I had any opportunities to expand that. Um, and with everything that was going on around it, the pension changes, a lot of people who had been affected massively, obviously, people will tell you, I'm sure that morale went, I'm sure, I'm sure it's done it before, but at that point it was definitely low. Um, and, you know, the people that I knew were being affected, people who had longer service than me, that affects everybody really. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I came to a decision. I was 10 years in or 10 years out. And um, as it happened, I was 10 and three quarters in. But um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Actually. Yeah, because so many so many guests on the podcast say exactly the same thing, Matt. They, they, you know, they, it was either lack of progression or it was just the changes that were going on. And honestly, it doesn't matter what rank, you know, I've interviewed, mm-hmm. everyone says the same thing. It's really, really interesting. But um, so you hinted that you, you actually left to become a train driver. So uh, you applied while you were in the job, I take it. Yeah. So <clears throat> if you want to, I'm sure the stories are everywhere, but my little story is, Someone new joined our team in the office. And I'll be honest, I'd not thought about train driving before this, mm-hmm. 100%. And you have the chat, don't you, of how you, you know, who, where you've done, what you've done. And one of the first questions you have is how long you got left, isn't it? Everyone has that course. question. Yeah. Um, so he was a little bit older than me. Uh, and he had, I don't know how long it was. Um, but I said, well, I'm kind of like debating, you know, this 10 years in, 10 years out thing. And he was like, oh, uh, where do you live? You know, and he was like, oh, they're looking for train drivers there. And I was like, are they? And I'll be perfectly honest with you. He then said, they earn about 50 grand. And I went, do they? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I'll have a look. And I'll be honest, that's where it started. Um, really? What, 100%. That, that was exactly how it started. I was in the office. I then went on the computer, had a look. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're looking for applicants. Um, and basically, I just applied I can't remember if it was that day or the day after, but certainly very soon after that chat. Right. Well, that's um, mad. That's brilliant. I love that. What's the um, application process then, Matt? What did you have to do? What can you recall from, from what you actually had to do? Um, so Literally from start, because this will really help if we go through sort of all yeah, the steps so, step of, of what the application process is. That'd be fab. Because of what I, um, I, I've kind of progressed slightly within the train driving, which gives me a bit more view of the, um, the application process it is now. Um, so I can tell you a few more things about how it's changed since I did it. Oh, that'd be great. Um, yeah. But my my thing basically was a online application, almost like a, a, a basic CV of just what you've done. Um, and then if I remember correctly, it was three questions around. <clears throat> it was uh, the best way to describe it was a bit almost like um, one on following procedure. Uh, one on almost a little bit of common sense, if that makes, obviously they wouldn't describe it as that, but that was kind of like how your answer it was. And um, I was trying to remember the third one this morning, but I couldn't quite, um, no, I don't think I can remember quite. What the, there was only three questions at the time. Yeah. So anyway, I filled in that basic thing. Uh, I mean, obviously, as I'll tell you a bit later about the interview process, the, the procedure thing obviously is no issues from where we where we come from. Um, and yeah, filled it in, sent it off, thought to myself, well, we'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. If you get it, we'll then look at it. And, you know, didn't really think about the, yes, I'll definitely do it. I just thought, why not apply? You know, mm-hmm. what's the harm in it? Um, so from there, got a reply saying, yes, you've, you've passed the initial stage. And then they did do two interview days. So they'd give you a day where you would, uh, you'd, you'd rock up and you'd be doing these um, national tests. So for there's, national, there's a, a set number of national tests to be a train driver, and that's all across the country. Um, they're, all, if, they're all available on YouTube. Um, if you Googled them, you'd be able to practice them and, and stuff like that, uh, which, of course, I did, because why wouldn't you? Um, a lot of uh, concentration. There's a, there's, there's a famous one. I don't know if you've heard it called the DOTS test, where they have lines and lines of dots, and you have to ring all the groups of dots that are four. 
So there's groups of three, five, two, four, or six, but you right. only have to do the ones that are four, and it's a big long page, and you get a set amount of time to do it. All right, never heard of that. Oh, have you not? Oh. No, no, and never then, come across that. And then the idea being that it's uh, accuracy versus speed. So you might finish the page, but if you haven't got it right, then mm. obviously they don't want you. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, that was, that's kind of like one of the ones most people have heard of. Um, there's a few others. So uh, it was uh, the best way. To, uh, I know it's changed now, but when we did it, it was it was almost like a bit like the X Factor. So you would turn up, and the first test was have you got your national insurance number? And, and I'll be honest with you, you, that was it. Yes, there you go. Some, uh, somebody did turn up and fail that. So <laughs> that's where we started. Um, but it was almost like, so they would do one test and then they'd tell you, put you in a room if you'd passed and they'd put you in a room if you'd failed. And basically if you'd failed, that was it. You were gone mm. home. So it was a very weird day really, but mm. luckily for me, I managed to get through those. Uh, and then you go to a day two, uh, which was slightly more involved. There was a multi-module interview, um, which is a bit like a lot of the interviews you kind of get in the police where. It's uh, awful, certainly what I remember. Um, there's a lot where you get asked, well, well, how did you feel about it? What, why did you do that? You know, not just what are the things to do? Why? How? How did you feel? Um, which, again, is um, like for me personally, wasn't that out there, having been through interview processes in the police. Um, for some people I now know who came in from non-police stuff, they found that very intimidating. Mm -hmm never really been asked the the the, the how and the how you feel as a five w h type thing yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah um so again you know fortunate to get through that and then it was a interview with the with the manager and he and i'll be honest with you his brother was a was a police officer who into the, the man who interviewed me and he said to me right can you give me a, an indication of when you follow rules and procedures so we're back to back to that mm. again and i ran through an arrest from, you know, point of arrest to booking him into custody. And he turned around to me and said, well, I've, I've, you've done about four questions now. Um, and if you, uh, the best one thing, I mean, I, I know we're talking uh, specifically about these two roles into intermingling. Um, if you take a role of a train driver or the, what they ask for, and just there might be railway experience at the bottom. If you take that bit off, it's basically exactly the same. It's follow your rules and procedures, calm under pressure. Um, you know, almost anything you can think of as a police officer that you do, mm. it just goes straight over. Mm. Um, you know, and of course, from a railway industry point of view, they love us because yeah. you're going to turn up on time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're going to follow the rules and the procedures. Yeah. You're going to know what, you're not going to go mad when something goes wrong. Mm. Um, you know, they, as far as I can see from talking to people, you know, slightly higher up in the industry who do the companies, they just, they just absolutely love it. They, they, you know, they've loved the, you know, changeover of people, a lot of people. I mean, even where I work, there's at least off the top of my head, I can think of five or six ex police people really? doing it. Yeah. And there must be hundreds more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why it's proven to be so popular and obviously with the pay and everything else as well. And what we'll do, Matt, if this is all right, we'll, we'll talk about your story specifically for now and then we'll go into uh, the new process, if that's okay, okay. The end, if that's all right, because it'd be really good to to follow your story through. So um, so obviously you had the interview with, uh, with the manager. What was the next step? Um, so basically after that, they uh, you waited outside and got told whether you, you had a position or not. Um, so fortunately for me, I got told yes. Uh, and then... You next step is a medical, um, and then they gave you a start date of a training course. Wow! Um, so now, how do you feel at that point? Just before we go, sorry, I, I, I'm going to interrupt. Okay, it's, yeah, it's yeah, a real so key yeah, thing. I so, yeah, because whether I've actually decided it or not, have I? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. And also, you know, it's uh, right. I've got this this career over here that I'm fairly secure. I'm not that happy, but there are things like the pension and all those sort of things. And I know you've been in for ten years, Certainly. but there's still a sizable chunk of your working career. Um, so it's still a massive decision to make was it an absolute no-brainer for you or um or how you know how did you feel at that point if i told you now it's an absolute no-brainer for me if i told you from then <laughs> certainly not um so well, you know let, let, we go through the things that you know pros and cons basically mm. that, that was it that was that mm. was the main thing um you know you, you you have this security in the police you're getting paid each month you know no 
unless you really mess it up, you're theoretically getting paid every month. Um, you know, where I was, as I said, fortunate for me, I wasn't on the front line. Get, you know, I wasn't putting my life at risk every day, which, you know, fair play to all the people who still do that. Um, so, you know, I was quite comfortable, if that's, if that's fair. Um, so, and then against that was, can I do that for another 20 years? Um, what can I do for 20 years? Where can I go? Uh, again, and, you know, I'll say quite a lot that I'm fortunate, <clears throat> but I do believe that is um, I had a very, very good sergeant who, who um, made the job what I was doing very good. Mm. He, he was brilliant. He looked after everybody. He was, you know, but he was retiring in a year's time. Mm. And you have that unknown of, well, who's going to come in, you know, and I'm not saying, but there is some people you probably don't want to work for. So there we go. <laughs> yeah. um, so I had, you know, that kind of basically pros and cons all the way through. Um, as it happens, my father-in-law is also, was a, is retired, did the full 30 years. Mm. Um, and he was the scared, well, for me, the most scared, like, kind of person to ask about it because I'm, I'm thinking he's going to say to me well you know perhaps you should stay you don't know what really what that is yeah. and and to be fair he, he, we had a chat about it and he just turned to me and said do you want that I think you should go for it wow and I was like okay that's that's a good that's a good <laughs> plus um now again a little bit else if you when you go into it you you start on the training course it's it's half wage so let's go through that. So let's go. Yeah. So just just before we jump into your training course, resignation and the response to your resignation, just very quickly. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, again, um, well, if I go through all the people I kind of respected and trusted their opinion within the police, not one person told me no. Not one person said you're crazy. Um, so I decided, yeah, right, okay, you know, the pros for me outweigh the cons. Or we're going to go for it. Um, so handed the resignation in. My uh, chief inspector, who I gave it to, uh, shook my hand and said, fair play. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, I worked, how can I put it without giving it away, but I worked in a very um, prominent place where there was lots of people of a lot higher rank than me. Uh, and I mean a lot higher. Um, and... I know a few of them through my, through what I did during my day job, you know, not friendly, but just, you know, business wise, but as it is in the police, everyone hears about what you're doing anyway. And yeah, again, I had handshakes in the lift. I had people saying fair play to you. Um, I had a, a meeting with the, the, the person in charge of the whole unit to, for the like exit interview. Mm. And again, he, there was no kind of like, what can we do to keep you or anything like that? It was purely just like, oh, well, well done. Congratulations. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest, perfectly honest, I was sad to leave. Mm -hmm. I was, I felt sad. Um, but yeah, all these people who were kind of like telling me, well done, even though I hadn't, I didn't really feel like I'd done anything, <laughs> kind of then gives you that confidence to go, do you know what, maybe, I, you know, well, I've gone for it now, so maybe I am doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, but yes, I was very, I mean, I wasn't expecting anyone to come up to me and go, oh, please stay. No. I really wasn't. Um, but I kind of did expect at least some kind of questions as to what would have made you stay. Or, yeah. But that never materialised. No. Um, it's funny, and that, isn't it? And that kind of finished me off with the point of going, do you know what? I think in my thinking, I'm, I feel correct in the terms that that looked after feeling that I started with mm. has certainly gone yeah um and that did help in the in the uh, how can I put it in, in <laughs> thinking I'd made the correct decision yeah so. yeah no that makes perfect sense yeah absolutely so your your training course your initial training course what do you do where do you go that sort of stuff how does it how does it what sort of stuff do you cover and how long is it and you mentioned half pay as well Yes. Yeah, so the salary is half pay until you're a qualified driver. Um, mm. Some different areas are slightly different. Um, so if we just go into that, some of them will do you a shorter training period and then give you part of the wages. And then when you have finished learning, they give you the rest. Um, the, uh, the company that I work for basically said, no, it's half pay until you're qualified. And then you just double to, to full pay. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so that was obviously a bit of a consideration because 
the half pay was quite a drop from my yeah. my salary in the, in in the plea. But anyway, you know that's something that we managed and thankfully got through. So, and how long's um, the course, Matt? Sorry to sort of interrupt again. So, but just no, how no, long's that course? So, just wondering about that. How long you're on half pay for, basically? So most of them will give you a year to do it. Mm. Um, I was slightly unlucky. It took me eighteen months, um, but that was due to the infrastructure. They didn't have an instructor to actually train me after I'd done my classroom work. Mm. So I had to wait about six months to get that instructor. Um, but don't don't feel sorry for me because actually I got paid for, once I'd finally qualified, they actually back paid me four months of that six. Okay. So yeah. if I was honest, I was probably on half pay for about 13, 14 months. Okay. Yes, yeah, great. Um, so yeah, you the way it works is six months, the best way to look at it is six months of kind of classroom work. And then six months of actually learning how to drive the train. Mm-hmm. Um, so the classroom work is uh, there's something called um, the, obviously the, the rule book, which uh, is part of the railway industry. It's like the Bible, um, updated whenever anything kind of goes wrong. They kind of change the things then to make sure that doesn't go wrong again. Um, but it's this big thick book, and they go, "There you go. There's your rule book," and you kind of look at it and go. What am I going to do here? Um, but it's it's a little bit more. Um, so there's a lot in there that doesn't relate to every single train company. Uh, I mean, for a start, there's half of it is for diesel trains, half of it is for electric trains. Mm. So if you're only running electric trains, that's half of it gone already. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I found <clears throat> there was that there was one ex police. So how many was on in my group? There was eight people on my starting group. Uh, one ex, so it was me. Uh, ex-police officer, ex-PCSO, ex-fireman, um, someone who worked in the railway before, an ex-prison officer. There's a bit of a story there in itself, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> um, Amazing, yeah. And then there was two of us who were not railway or not emergency services, basically. Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of people find... Because, you know, because uh, a lot of people who go for these roles are kind of like mid-30s, mate, perhaps even mid-40s, you know, who have not really studied for quite a long while mm-hmm. can find going back to the classroom slightly difficult. Um, but the one thing I'd say about that is they're there. It, it's, how can I put it? It's not there to to weed you out. Once you've started that course, you have a role. So it's not like, oh, you need to pass this or you're, you're out. It's mm-hmm. We want you to pass this, so we, we're going to assist you in learning it. It's not a you have to learn it or else type thing, which is, okay. I think is very important because a lot of people would look at it and say, oh, I don't know if I could do six months in a classroom again. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't studied for 20 years or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, no, that, that was quite good. Um, there's obviously a lot of health and safety stuff around it. Um, and then <clears throat> interspersed in the course, you go out for like a week on the trains and have a look from the front. You don't drive, but you kind of, obviously pre-COVID um, and then kind of uh, you get a feel of like how they work and you know what drivers actually do and that kind of stuff bring that back to the classroom um, so there is an exam at the end of it that you, that you obviously have to pass to get into the next bit but again it, it's more it's more of a we're, we're here to assist you in that exam not just test you on it which, mm-hmm. is, which is really good um, so you do your six months and then if it all, obviously for me, it was slightly different, but nowadays it's not too bad. You'd go then get yourself a driver instructor uh, and basically learn the route that you're going to drive and how to drive the train. Um, if you want me to go into that, then actually how to drive a train is not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't <laughs> leave it like that. Is that no, there'll be people it. shouting at me for that, won't they? Yeah, Don't exactly. Yeah, people, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I'd love that. Um Go on, just briefly, just give us a snippet so, of, of what's involved and then we'll move on. Yeah, so... Because people, people are going to love it. They're going to want to know. Yeah. They're definitely going to so A lot of people seem to think that the train does drive itself. That's not true, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, there's certain areas of the country where there's small bits of track where it can drive itself. Um, I, mean, I think if you look at the DLR, Docklands, like Railway mm-hmm. in London, that is operator, not driver. Um, but that was built like 10 years ago with all the mm-hmm. technology we have now. And obviously the trains were designed for it all. Um, most of the railway is still Victorian. Uh, people have probably seen bridges being raised to put electric wires underneath them, all that kind of stuff. East Coast mid mainline um, mm-hmm. improvements, you know, and this is all improvement of Victorian railways. So although the technology is there to drive itself, 
they don't really drive themselves at the moment. Um, but actually, to make it go is not that difficult. Um, there's, a, there's a, you know, put it into forward, and you've got a joystick. Go one way to go, put the other way to break. Um, so it's not particularly difficult to get it moving. Um, the, the, the difficult or slight difficulty, shall I say, comes in the fact that you need to know exactly where everything is on that railway on your journey. Mm. Um, so the best way I can describe this to people who, who don't do it is imagine you're driving up the M1, but you're doing the whole length of the M1. So obviously, you know, and you need to know every single junction, where it goes and whether you can go there. You also need to know about every single um, junction services. We'll class them as stations. You're doing 90 miles an hour, but your car, your train doesn't break. Oh, there's a station. I'll stop. You need to know your braking point. Mm-hmm. You need to know what speed you're getting up to. Um, so, for example, on, on my route, we do, I think in a day, roughly 96 station stops. Mm-hmm. Um, we're quite uh, um, quite short kind of spaces, whereas obviously if you're kind of like doing across the country you might only do five stops as you go up north or, or come down south but anyway um so if you think of it from that point of view we need to know at least 96 stopping places because although we're doing those stations twice a day as such you're doing them from both directions so you need to know both directions where you're gonna where you're gonna put the brake in what speed you should be doing when you put the brake in all about that station as in how long your platform is what side the doors are on um so the best way I can describe it is it's one really big memory test. Um, and like most things like that, it just comes with time doing it. Obviously, you've got to learn it. You've got to think of ways to get it into your brain. Um, I mean, things that, you know, stupid remembering um, registration numbers as a PC. And, you know, one of the first things I learned, trying to remember it. If you can't remember it, make a little story of about the last three mm. digits, you know, whatever it might be, BFG, big friendly giant, whatever you want, right? Mm. It's going to stick in your brain. Um, so for me, I found I, that's how I learn stuff. That's how I memorize stuff. So, you know, when I started to learn my stations, I would take the first letter and make them into a, a sentence. Mm. And I'd remember the sentence and then turn it back to, the, you know. So it's one, um, it's a real, it's a big memory test, really um and if everything's going fine then it's a it's a good day the issues come when things start to go wrong yeah. you know infrastructure wise passenger wise um but that's where as i refer back to earlier they love police officers yeah because there's the, that not that panic there's that right something's going on what am i going to do yeah. not oh my god what am i going to do it's like what what am i going to do right i'm going to sort that out then sort this out there's someone you know whatever it might be on your varying level of the incidents that you could, that could happen. <clears throat> so, yeah, so it is, um, how can I put it? it, it it's not, uh, people will probably shout at me again, but it's not rocket science, but there is a lot to learn. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, and there's a lot of pressure as well. And, and something I'd love to know is the first time you went out on your own with passengers <laughs> and how you felt on that first journey. Um, the first time you, you get, you know, I was going to say, <laughs> first time you yeah. step in knowing that you're on your own. Yeah, um, it's um, very, uh, how can I, it's, so you, you would have that trainer with you for nigh on six months. I think mine was roughly about five months by the time I, I, I'd taken my test and passed. And yeah, I can still remember the first journey. I've been doing on my own now for, what, nearly four years. And mm. I can still remember the first journey. Uh, I only did a short, probably hour trip. Um, but yeah, it's for a start, it's like a little bit of novelty. As soon as you, you leave, yeah. you're like, oh yeah, I'm on my own. It's great. Uh, and then you, you kind of come and go, right, what have I got to remember? Right. <laughs> but yes, it's very nerve wracking. Um, but on the other side, I mean, go down the other side of that. It's very rewarding as well, because you know, you've worked a good year to get yeah. to that point. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so how things changed in terms of the actual training, sorry, the, um, the interview and the, and the selection process, if we go into that, and then we'll talk about how things have changed for you on a, on a personal level, if that's okay. So you, yeah. you mentioned earlier that um, you sort of stepped up, if you like, and you're now involved to some degree of, or you've got a better knowledge of, of what's happening now in terms of the, re, the um, recruitment process. Yeah. So um, I suppose it's a little bit of what I've done. So I did my, uh, did my training. You then have two years, uh, almost like probation. They call it a, a PQA, but same, same idea. 
uh, you looked after a bit more. They kind of like, you know, watch you a bit more and check everything going right. Um, but then we uh, obviously a lot of people know there's a strong union side to the to the yeah. railway. Yeah. Um, so each depot has their own local reps. So as it happened, there was a new depot open up and they needed some reps. But all the people who were at the depot were of roughly the same service. I say service, I'm going back again. Yeah. Um, same length of in the job, shall we say. Yeah. So a lot of times your union people and people like that are people who have been there quite a long while. But because all the people at the depot were about the same, um, there wasn't that many people who wanted to do it. So I said, okay, I'll have a go at that. I'm, I'm more interested. Um, but what that allowed me to do was get more involved in actually how the railway runs a bit and obviously with managers and stuff rather than just being assessed it was more of a you know discussion based role I suppose um, but what I would say from that is yes I've learned how they've changed the application process um, which to be honest if you look at it from a from a, a sensible point of view is better now um, so and they also obviously get a lot of applications so mm. um, now it's a CV to apply so a proper CV, like a, a full I, CV, I believe, it's not an online, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and then what will happen now is you will do online tests, company tests, before you go and do the national tests. So obviously they're, they're weeding out or they want to weed out the people that they don't want to send for the tests, whereas yeah. if you remember back, I was in that kind of X Factor thing, one room's good, one room's bad type thing. Mm -hmm. um, they clearly probably do that online before they obviously send now. Um, and then... You still have to do the um, multi-module interview uh, and the national tests um, after you've completed like the online tests, uh, and then you still go for a manager interview. So the main change is that start where, but what I found, if I'm honest, was a reasonably easy intro to get into those national tests. I, it's, it's a lot harder now with them putting another step in. Um, and also a lot of those tests are <laughs> from from my point of view then they don't want train driver answers they want just uh how can i put it like almost like more common sense answers rather than what if you know anything about the railway if that makes sense so probably a yeah. good thing for most people but yeah. i've had a couple of people ask me can they help can i help and then like i've looked at the question normal i'd answer it like this but i don't think that's what they want <laughs> yeah so is it sort of is it is it logical thinking and reasoning and those sort of things and and yeah yeah okay yeah yeah so it's more it's uh they'll give you little scenarios of what you would do and you know they're, they're looking at hitting their, their customer service mm -hmm. Uh, make sure you follow all the rules again. So it's all, it's all back to the the core principles of it. Um, but I think they're just, obviously, when you're within the industry and doing the job, you look at it from the way that you would actually do the job rather than, or how the job is done, shall we say, rather in yeah. comparison to the, the nice starry list of how it should be done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's funny, isn't it? That's every... every... Yes, I'm sure <laughs> there's everything. <laughs> everything is there, whatever we do. Brilliant. And... Um... So how have things changed for you then, Matt, on a personal? Um, so on a personal level for me, um, my I had a, a little boy who's now seven and I've got a little girl who's four. And obviously, if people would tell you, kids change your life. And going back to the not wanting to go back out to the, to the front line when I was in the police, um, you know, when I was 25 and joined, I was, yeah, let's, let's you know, I'll fight anything if I have to. It's not a problem. Let's just go do it. Rah, rah, rah. And then obviously it's like, well, I really would like to get home tonight, you know, mm -hmm. see the boy and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I worked a good hour and a half away from home. So I was commuting to, uh, to get into the, um, get into work. So the shifts, you know, they were long days. I wasn't seeing the baby, you know, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously only on days off. Um, and so, yeah, that was another thing that, that kind of was part of it. And again, I got, so I, the role was actually where I lived, uh, the train driving role. So I went from an hour and a half to like five minutes. Wow. Um, which I know is not really anything to do with the job or, or the job I went into, but it was mm. definitely a big consideration for me. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. Um, we, a train, train drivers only work a 35 hour week. I was going to ask about the shifts as well. So yeah, um, really good to go that. Yeah. yeah. So again, I was already cutting my work time by 10, 15 hours, depending on the week. Um, 
so it's a yeah so basically it's a four day week uh, and over those four days you'd work out uh, it work out to be an average of 35 hours but over a certain number of weeks so one week you might work 38 but another week you might work 32 so mm. it kind of evens out over over a period <clears throat> all the shift ba- all the shift patterns are completely different in terms of what railway company you work for um if i took mine and it would be roughly seven days on two days off seven days on five days off mm. um but within those seven days you don't uh, my railway company don't don't have to work the sunday so sundays are over and above normal salary you know if you want to work it great there's your overtime if you don't have it off yeah you don't have to book it or anything it's just pretty how it is so I mean, I could go into it's three on four, but it just doesn't, makes more sense to say seven, two, yeah. and seven, five. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but again, being closer to home, I had no issues with that. Um, back to early, late and nights. Um, but again, there's, there's no 12 hours. Um, you know, your night shifts are eight hours just under. Antisocial um, shifts are only eight hours, 30 maximum, which is finishing after midnight or starting before 5 a.m um <clears throat> so again going back to me personally i saw my children or well, the second one as well like so much more mm-hmm. um i never really had that fear of not coming home and yeah, whether that be you know, not for you know in trouble but just even like you know something happens right no one's going home you know that kind of stuff that i've forgotten all about until i just said it so <laughs> yeah. it must be a good thing um so yeah for me personally that was brilliant and if you I mean, I don't know how much of the minutiae and salaries you want me to go into, but for me personally, it's uh, a lot better deal than what I was getting in the police. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People can do their own research. I'm not going to ask you what salary you're on. No, I mean, it's all, I'll be honest with you, you can Google it. Uh, All the train company salaries are available online. Yeah. Um, And as I said, there's, there's, you know, there's a, with my company, there's overtime available every Sunday, well, not every Sunday, but at least, two out of three sometimes so yeah. if you want to if you're that person who wants to to work hard work more and earn more then you know the, the opportunity is definitely there yeah um but yes no for me personally I, 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 it's, it's, it's unreal in terms of what i was earning being yeah. in the police compared to what i'm earning now and i guess quality of life as well like you say i mean it's just improved immeasurably isn't it so uh, yes definitely one yeah i mean again <clears throat> a lot of people always you know the, the grief level I know grief is that word that we always use in, yeah. in the police. You know, I, I've probably been sworn up twice in four years. Yeah. Uh, and that's so by colleagues. Like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 right, you guess well, that's more often. But, um, yeah, the, the odd passenger gets annoyed if you're late. But yeah. again, because of what, how, you know, and the things that we've been through, y- you laugh at it because yeah. you're like, are you really like swearing at me because there's a train late? I mean, I know it's very important to you right now, but, you know, and it, it, yeah, yeah, it just completely washes over you. It's, it's just funny. It's so different, terms. isn't it? Yeah, it is so, yeah. so different. Incredible. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, grief level, I can't even, yeah, gone down 99%, I think. <laughs> yeah. And just go back to nights for a second. What What is a night shift as a train driver? So I can only tell you, obviously, for the one for my company, um, yeah. but roughly we work, if you average it out, it'd be 10 till 6. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it's a proper night. It's a full night, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, our railway closes down on a Saturday evening. So usually, a, you know, not many trains after 2 a.m. on a Saturday around mm. our way. So um, you usually get away early on a Saturday night. But, mm. uh, but yeah, most of them are, are full nights. I understand. Brilliant. Mate, it's fantastic. Is there anything that, any other sort of last message that you'd like to get across to people who might be maybe a little bit worried about making the jump or, um, and one other thing I'd like to cover as well is, you know, these vacancies, um, they're gone in a flash, you know, they literally <laughs> they advertise and then they're not, you know, they're literally, so, you know, what's the best way of getting these notifications as well? So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, notification wise, there's, I mean, it appears Facebook is, is a really big thing for that. Um, a lot of people who have joined chain driving within the last probably five to 10 years, um, are very keen to help other people do it. Um, so if there's a, you know, a, a, an advert comes out, even not really that local to where I am, I'll, f- I'll see it on Facebook shared by people I know in, in the industry. Um, and then I'll share it because 
someone might be interested in working mm. an hour away from their, their home, fair enough, but, you know, or, um, or, you know, or whatever they decide to do. Um, so that's a really good place. It's hard to probably nail down how you find them without probably just searching the train company names. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, if um, if you went to the Azalef uh, website, they literally have all the the companies and their locations. Okay. It's always very very handy for people. You know, they might not even know there's a train depot twenty miles away. You know, mm-hmm. they just know the train goes through there. Um, so that might be a, that's a good place. Um, but yeah, Facebook is definitely one of the uh, big areas where train vacancies are shared. Mm. Um, is it specific groups, Matt, or is that um, sort of individual? Uh, I, yeah, that'd be individuals for me. I mean, I, I'll, yeah. I'll be honest, I didn't join that there is there's a lot of forums out there that mm. i did look at when i was joining um that can give you a bit of him you know people going through the same process who you know obviously if they've done some of the tests will give you ideas of how to do them um as i said even if you just go again google them there's youtube videos on on how to practice them um which yeah why wouldn't you do them if mm. you were going for it so yeah, um <clears throat> yeah um but going back to your, your first point on that with the people who are perhaps thinking of doing something similar or even just leaving the police. Um, how can I put it? I, I, I've had a couple of people who I know leave via mental health through the police. And I'm not saying that's obviously, you know, it's not for everyone, of course. Um, but that really did pain me a little bit and did also help me make a little bit of a decision to go, do you know what? I think I might. And I don't know whether this happened to yourself a bit with you know retirement, et cetera, but there was there was a weight went off my shoulders. Yeah, I had exactly the same. Of not carrying that warrant card. Yeah, 100%. Um, I, I had exactly that conversation this week with someone who's considering it, Matt, exactly yeah. that. There's a, there's a lot of things that, you know, if you if you turn into a bit of a doom merchant, which some, some days you can after coming home from being a police officer, I wouldn't blame anybody, you know, and you think to yourself, especially not not working where I live, so, you know, I could, but, you know, something happens over there. Well, there's a camera now. So well, why didn't this person do anything? Oh, no, now you find out that person's a police officer, mm-hmm. you know, and all you were doing were walking home from the shop and all of a sudden you should have been involved in this and, you know, all hell's to lose. Mm-hmm. And I know that's extreme, don't get me wrong. I completely accept that. But there was, yeah, there was um, a, a weight off my shoulders is about the best thing I can describe it as. I didn't have that feeling that, everywhere I went, something might happen. Mm. Um, now, whether that's just me, whether that was something to do with, you know, my service, I, you know, but you just said someone else, you was having a chat with them about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just definitely something that I would, I would say is, is a big positive. Um, in terms of like, um, so in terms of personal circumstances, in terms of, you know, it's a big, it's a big step. Uh, and don't get me wrong. I, I can't, I can't play down that. I can't say I wasn't fearful. I was, wasn't scared. I wasn't thinking, oh my God, is it going to work out? Because of course I did. You know, even now being in the train the railway industry, I know it's quite safe. You know, theoretically, you're going to get paid at the end of the month as long as you, again, don't do anything too stupid. <laughs> um, so, you know, and from that point of view, that has helped me personally accept it. Now, I know if you're going out with the police and doing something that, does not have that you know guarantee i could understand it, it might even be even more of a, of a of a jump but i will say that it is definitely the best thing i did mm-hmm. and i can't pull no punches on that because that's the honest truth i loved mm-hmm. my time in the police um if you said to me would i do it again if i had my time yes i that you know that's my enjoyment of it but it was time for me to leave and it was time for me to try something different and I am very, very pleased that I pushed myself and other people as well. You know, obviously, I, as I said to you earlier, I spoke to a lot of other people who are respected. And um, yeah, for me personally, it turned out to be a, a very good decision. Brilliant. I'm so glad we connected, mate. Honestly, thank you. I know I sent you a random request on LinkedIn saying, that, mate, how do you fancy being a guest on a, on a random <laughs> podcast? So thank you so much, Matt. That's incredible. Okay. That is just such a great interview and people are going to love it. I promise you it's going to help a lot of people. So um, if people want to connect with you, what's the best way of doing that? Would that be through LinkedIn? Yeah, more than happy. Yeah, I, I, I'd chat with people over that. Um, no problem at all. So, yeah, more than, more than happy for that. Lovely.
Thanks so much for your time, mate. Really, I do appreciate it. It's a fantastic interview. Great talking to you. And uh, I'll, I'll buy you that coffee. You're only down the road, so I'll buy you that coffee when we can. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, mate. Cheers. Cheers. I really hope you enjoyed that. It was great spending time with Matt and listening to his story and uh, and talking through the role that it seems most people would love to be able to do. So uh, hopefully that's given you some real insight into how to become a train driver. Um, if you like what you've heard, then please hit five stars and uh, leave a review on uh, Apple Podcasts. And don't forget, you can also go to the website, which is www.bluelightlevers.com. And you can also join the private Facebook group, which you can access through uh, the website. Thanks ever so much for listening. I really do appreciate it and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.